the name of this album is The Best of Bill Monroe. And this came out in 1975. And it's not quite the best. Um, doesn't have anything by Lester Flat, Earl Scruggs, String Bean, Chubby Wise, Cedric Rainwater, because all those were recorded with other labels. And many of the versions of the songs that are from that era that are on this album were re recorded. He switched to Decca, which labored from MCA back in 1950, and the recording quality, not just of Bill Monroe, but of other bluegrass groups, improved drastically at that time. Sometime around 1950, there was a big improvement in recording quality and stuff recorded before then, at least bluegrass stuff, sounds really horrible as far as the sound quality goes, which is a shame because some of the best performances were in that era. If you listen to jazz from the same era, it was recorded much better than bluegrass was. So. The first thing that's noticeable about this collection is that it's a double album and side four is on the same record as side one, two and three are another record. That seems odd, but if you'll remember, in the old days, record players would hold up one record and you'd play one and when that finished, the needle would move and it would drop and then it would play the other one. So this was set up so that you could play side one and then side two would drop down. Then you have to take them off and flip them over. And you could play side three and then side four would drop down. So that's kind of convenient, except this is a compilation. It was not recorded and arranged in a way to make an album for the most part, but there was some effort made to that. So let's, what is the actual music on here? Let's go through these. So side one starts with Uncle Pen, which is pr probably one of the best songs in that era. Um, Jimmy Martin sings the lead on the chorus and Rudy Lyle's a banjo player on that. Uh, the next song is Let Me Rest at the End of My Journey. Then Bluegrass Twist, which is instrumental. Then It's Mighty Dark to Travel, which is a re-recording of an older verse, older song. They did that back in the 40s with Lester Flat, but now they re-record it. Then Pretty Fair Maiden in the Garden. So that's side one. Now, side two starts off with Blue Moon of Kentucky. And this is not the original version, they re-recorded The original version was just a slow song. Elvis made it faster. So Bill Monroe made a version with a slow section, and then it would speed up faster than Elvis did it and repeat. And this is one of the few songs that Bill has three fiddles on. Um, next is Gold Rush, of instrumental, then Close By, and Memories of Mother and Dad, a nice duet sung with Jimmy Martin. Then Is the Blue Moon Still Shining? Okay, so this is a double album. And so you get a fold-out thing with lots of history of who Bill Monroe is. And you get a listing of who all the musicians are. But he only tells you their first name once. And... The next time that person shows up in the listing, it's just his last name, so you got to remember who that was. And if you look at the listing of songs here, it's not, not in order of sides, and even a particular side is not in order. It has Gold Rice listed first, for, and then Blue Moon of Kentucky, which those are reversed. So, what's on side three? It starts off with an instrumental Kentucky mandolin, then Footprints in the Snow, which is a re-recording of that, then I'm Going Back to Old Kentucky, and then a duet with Little Girl and the Dreadful Snake, which has Sonny Osborne on banjo, 
Uh, Jimmy Martin singing lead there. That's one of my favorite Bill Monroe songs. And I've not been able to find this version of this song on any digital download. Not on YouTube, not on Apple Music. And that's a real shame because it's such a good recording. And finally, Highway of Sorrow, which is apparently a live recording of this. As I said, this is a compilation album. Okay, so then we go to side four. So, side four drops down, and it starts off with Roan County Prison, an instrumental, and then I Live in the Pass, and the first Whip of Will, then Come Back to Me in My Dreams, and finally Put My Little Shoes Away. There. So that's the best of Bill Monroe, supposedly. You know, this is the best. You know, there's lots left out. Um, stuff from the 40s is not here. But specific songs are not on here. Um, In the Pines is not on here. Katie Hill is not on here. Um, there was a great recording of that in the 40s. He could have re-recorded for this. In the Pines, he did re-record for this. Um, or not for this, but he did re-record it for this label. Uh, there's nothing that Carter Stanley did with Bill Monroe on here. Uh, there's hardly anything with Kenny Baker on here. Uh, none of the instrumentals that Bill Keith did are on here. There's no Devil's Dream, no Sailor's Hornpipe. Uh, Rawhide's not on here. I'm Blue, I'm Lonesome Too, which Hank Waves wrote for Bill, is not on here. Uh, it's supposedly the best of Bill Monroe. There's a lot on here. And there's lots of stuff that came out after this that are not on here. Now, around 2000, I bought another album called The Essential Bill Monroe, and it had a lot of the same stuff, plus a lot of stuff that's missing from here, but The Little Girl and the Dreadful Snake is not on that. I appear to have lost the CD, so I can't show you the cover. I was going to review that as a separate thing, and I can't find it. But I must have had it somewhere because when I moved, I had to reload all my CDs or I would lose any music that I had loaded on my computer in Europe onto iTunes. So, anyway, uh, it's a good album. I recommend it. There's a lot missing from it, but what is on here is good. So, have fun with it.